The Nigerian economy is huge. Despite the global economic sabotage caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Ukraine, the country still records decent GDP growth since the third quarter of 2020. Nigeria recorded 3.5% growth in the second quarter of 2022, 3.1% in the fourth quarter, and 3.9% in the fourth quarter of 2021, with more positive growth expected in the third and fourth quarter of 2022. With all of this economic growth, the country barely has a sufficient infrastructure to match. Take the port for example, more than 90% of trades with Nigeria takes place in its maritime space. Many in Daddy are Papa, Tinkan, Wari, Calabar, One, and Port Harcourt Port are at the forefront of these maritime activities. As it stands today, many of the eastern ports, specifically the Wari, Port Harcourt, and Calabar Port, barely contribute to maritime trade. This is as a result of neglect narrow water channels and insecurity along these ports. This puts enormous pressure on the Lagos port which happens to be the only major participant in maritime trade. With the frustration of getting cargoes in and out of Apapa and dealing with the enormous corruption within the port complex, many businesses now deem it profitable to use neighboring ports. This has allowed container traffic to the Lagos port fall exponentially from around 1.7 to 1.5 million TEUs, giving space for ports of smaller nations like the Lomu port, port of Tema and Abidjan port to take over as a leading hub of maritime trade in West Africa. This also means that the container vessels destined for Nigeria now burns at neighboring ports. This decreases Nigeria's revenue generation and increases the cost of doing business. The country is in dire need of a modern port that can accommodate larger vessels, specifically Panama-class ships, modern cargo handling and clearing facilities for ease in container management and traffic. Nigeria signing the African Continental Free Trade Agreement in 2019 also means more maritime activities within its waterways and if the country doesn't have the sufficient infrastructure for this, it will only spell more disaster for the Nigerian economy. The race to build a new deep sea port is born. Nigeria's revenue has been crippling for a couple of years. Though our eagerness to build a new port remains, the financial backing isn't available. The best way to implement this is to introduce public-private partnership or take loans. The PPP process seems to have worked in this aspect. Tularam Group, a leading multinational firm, has seen the huge revenue potential in a brand new port and has managed to gather support and partnership with China Harbour Engineering Company to form the Lekki Port LFTZ Enterprise. Other partners and shareholders include the Lagos State Government and the Federal Government of Nigeria through the Nigerian Port Authority. The result is the Lekki Deep Sea Port in Lagos, Nigeria. The basis of this kind of PPP is that the port is to be concessioned by the Lekki Port LFTZ Enterprise, which is to finance, build, operate, and transfer the port in 45 years after completion. Both the private sector and government are shareholders, with China Arbor Engineering Construction Company owning 52.5% equity stake. Tolerant Group with 22.5%, the Lagos State Government with 25% equity, and the Nigerian Port Authority with just 5%. Sitting on a 90 hectare piece of land within the Lekki Free Trade Zone, the Lekki Port is built to service container traffic, dry bulk, and liquid goods. With a capacity to handle 2.5 million TEU per annum and expansion plans for 6 million TEU per annum. The port owners have learned from the worrisome state of the Lagos port, hence the layout of the port, including the approach channel, turning circuit, and harbour basins have been derived from optimizations based on port operations, construction costs, and possible future extensions. The port has a water break of 1.5 km in length, a quay area of 1.2 km in length, 
a turning circuit of 600 meters, enough for a vessel of up to 16,000 standard containers. The approach channel is 11 kilometers long. A remarkable feature of this port is its container terminal draft, 40 meters in depth with potentials for further dredging to 16.5 meters. This alone makes it one of the deepest in West Africa. It is Nigeria's first port to host ship to shore gantry cranes. This crucial facility in cargo handling is missing in all major ports in Nigeria, which is part of the reason for their inefficiency. These gantry cranes can lift as much as 85 tons of cargo and makes it possible to access the rear modes of row on any vessel. Five of these cranes are installed at the port. It is a smart port, meaning everything is computerized in and out with minimum human interactions required. This feature alone allows swift cargo identification and clearing from the control rooms rather than on site. The manual processes which takes place at the Lagos port makes it a nightmare as the process is slow and prone to heavy corruption. The new Lekki port is designed to handle cargo ships which can hold at least 18,000 TEU across three berths in space. This will allow the port to become a full-fledged transshipment hub for Nigeria and its neighboring countries. The port will generate over $360 billion over its 45-year concession period before it is handed over fully to the Nigerian Port Authority. Building a port is just one part. The road infrastructure leading to the port is another part that must be considered. To prevent this new port from suffering, like a papa a few years back, Lagos State has pledged to constructing a six-lane rigid pavement or concrete road with two dedicated truck lanes for heavy-duty vehicles. Splitted into two phases, the first phase involves 18.75 km from Eleko to Ting Junction in Ekpe. The second phase, 26.7 km long, stretches from Eleko Junction to Adesoya Junction in Etiota Access. Both phases will allow free cargo traffic in and out of the port and to other parts of Nigeria. There will also be rail link in the future.